2019 is coming to a close, so it's time to talk about the best, the worst, the best horror movies, the worst horror movies, and the most disappointing movies, and the movies I will be looking forward to in 2020. Starting today will be the worst horror movies. Keep an eye out tomorrow for the t best, and every day from now until New Year's, there will be a new ranking video with the ones I just mentioned. And keep an eye out, I think I already dropped it, my ranking video for the Paranormal Activity franchise. Now, let's talk about the 10 worst horror movies of this year. Keep in mind, this is my list, not yours, mine. And it's all opinion based, it's not fact. I ain't basing my opinion on what other people say. I'm not trying to go with the general consensus. Well, people say it's shit, so therefore I think that too. No, my opinion, I don't try to cater towards anybody. I don't want to go with the crowd. So, yeah. I mean, the one that's at the top of my list, or towards the top, I've heard praise for. So, I'm not going with the crowd. That's not what I do. I give you my opinion unapologetically. I don't care what you think. So, number 10 will go to a movie that, honestly, to me, isn't really even a horror movie. But the first one has horror elements. And that is... Happy Death Day to you. This movie is a bad horror movie. This isn't a bad movie. That's why it's all the way down here at the bottom. Number 10. I went into this thinking it was going to have some of that similar horror slasher elements that the first one had. Yes, the first one is not really too horror-like, but it's got that mystery whodunit uh, a slasher feel and uh, story to it. This one doesn't focus on the slasher whodunit aspect so much that you forget that there's even a killer going around. She's just murdering herself left and right. Tree, she keeps killing herself. And it was obvious that she wasn't even the target. It's like, he's not trying to kill you. He's trying to kill the other chick, Lori, not you. And the comedy is just very Three Stooges-like at one point. I don't know. It's just weird. It didn't make me laugh. It made me, like, eye roll so hard when that one girl... Jan Janet, I don't know what her name is, but she's like doing this blind French thing. She's pretending like she's a blind French woman. It's just not funny. Like the movie is so not horror, but the first one was. So that was just a disappointing thing about this. It's got some great touching moments. It's definitely more in the drama sci-fi department more than horror. So yeah, that's just all I got to say about this. It's an okay movie, but for a horror movie, it's got to be in the top 10 worst because they did market it like a horror movie. You watch that trailer, they make it seem like there's some slashing shit going on and there's a slasher out there and there's going to be some kills. There isn't. So, number 10, Happy Death Day to you. Not a bad movie, just a bad horror movie. Number 9 goes to a movie I've seen twice now. I just bought it recently. It was a steal. It was like 5 bucks for a Blu-ray DVD pack and digital code. I was like, shit, why not? It wasn't that terrible, but it still made my top 10 list. I've only seen 50 movies this year at the theater. And a couple of DVD rentals here and there. But overall, I've only seen like 50. So it's not that much to choose from. Especially when it comes to horror. Because ho horror was only like a fourth or a third of all the films I watched this year. So top 10 is going to be basically all of them. <laughs> so uh, number 9 will go to The Prodigy. So yeah, I got this one for like 5 bucks. It was a steal. This one's okay. It's just... Blah. It's like the ending... I don't want to spoil it, but I was like, I've seen this before in other movies. Nothing new here. Evil kid. They do this reincarnation element, this new spin on possession. They do reincarnation. I thought that was interesting. I haven't seen that before. There's a couple of creepy moments, but there's not enough. There's not really a whole lot. And it's just, it made me laugh. There's this moment where he turns his, the kid turns his face towards his mom and he has like this 40 year old man's face it's like cgi and it looks awful i just chuckled it was supposed to scare you but i just laughed my ass off and the killer he takes people's like left hands and it just automatically made me think of south park the left hand killer and like when cartman's pretending he's a psychic and there's that detective he's like see it couldn't have been this guy because he takes the left hand this is a right hand you see have you seen that episode of South Park? South Park is amazing. Watch South Park. If you haven't watched it, you need to get on it. Just not a whole lot to say about it. Just another evil kid, omen type movie. The kids fucked up. The parents take too long to realize it. Or they just, they don't have the guts to do what they need to do to survive. To end what's, to end the curse, you know. And it's just, whatever. Number eight goes to The Intruder. This is the Dennis Quaid 
a thriller movie about an obsessed guy who sells his house to this new engaged or married couple and he does not want to let go of that house so he's like intruding in like yeah he's the intruder he's staying there and they just are so polite about like telling him to fuck off but then eventually they're like no seriously fuck off they're not playing nice no more and he's the reason why he's there i forget this movie is kind of forgettable there's not a whole lot of interesting things going on i found the main couple in this movie not to be interesting i wasn't really caring about their characters at all so yeah there's not it's not memorable that's it like dennis quaid he's the only fun part of the movie he's the only thing that was somewhat interesting his performance was good but that's it like yeah just one of those forgettable horror movies that came out in the spring right around Endgame, so nobody saw it. They all saw Endgame and not this. So, The Intruder, number eight. Number seven goes to a movie that's part of a trilogy, and I just saw all three of them for the first time a couple months ago. I was going to see this movie when it was premiering at the theaters. They had, like, a three-day premiere. I didn't get to see it, and even if I could, because it was playing at a theater near me, but I was like, I haven't seen the first two, so it would be pointless. So I didn't get to see it. But now I've seen it, and that's Three From Hell. This is just another Rob Zombie movie. I guess the last two movies he did didn't do too well, so he's like, all right, I'll go back to what's popular, and that's The Devil's Rejects. Those characters are dead, and it's ridiculous the explanation we get for how they're still alive. They got shot, like, what, 23 times each, and they're just still alive. There's some fun moments in this movie, definitely towards the end, where they're like they're basically like action heroes and they're in machete fights and uh, one girl has like a bow and arrow. There's some fun moments. The whole movie is very gritty and nasty. It's just vile, and that's Rob Zombie. That's his style. The movie is just ugly, and it's just a little too long, if you ask me. And I just the, the dialogue, once again, it's just atrocious. You got D. Wallace in here. Who would hire her to be a security guard at prison? The acting from Rob Zombie's wife in this movie is awful. She goes way too far. Like, seriously, tone it down. Number six goes to my most popular viewed review right now, and that is The Banana Splits. This is a movie that is about a TV show back in the 70s that's still playing in this movie's universe, still playing today, and they go to watch a live showing and... These robots that are part of the show, they're rewired and reprogrammed to do evil shit. Now, it's a very corny concept. And you know, the trailer, the it all looks corny. It's dumb on paper. So you would think that they would not take themselves serious, uh, seriously. But when you watch the movie, there's like all this drama and there's all these serious moments. You got the husband who's obviously cheating on the wife. You got the stoner, cliche stoner son who even sounds and talks stone. He was annoying as hell. Who's like got this love interest, this chick that works for the studio. And I don't give a fuck. These kids aren't even scared because they don't have good child actors. None of them take the situation seriously. The kids, they're never scared. And I was just like, really? Like... You're in a cage, and people are dying around you. Fucking act scared. Start crying. You're, you could never see your parents again. It was just unbelievable. There's some gore, but that's about it. That's, like, the only thing about this movie that was even remotely, like, oh, that's cool, is the gore and the gag, the, the gore effects, and the just some of the creative kill, like the guy getting ripped from, like, limb, from limb from limb, getting his arms and legs ripped off, and the one guy gets, like, a lollipop shoved down his throat. It's just... Dumb. It's a dumb movie overall. And the ending's retarded too. Number five goes to Pet Cemetery. This is a just lifeless remake. It sucks all the emotion that was in the original. The original is just so gut-wrenching. It has so much emotion to it. It's creepy as fuck. It makes you just uncomfortable. It's about life and dad having to have that conversation with your kids. And this one... They try to change. They try to change things up a bit with killing the daughter instead of the kid, but the marketing fucked that up for you. Not me, because I avoided all that stuff going into it. But the marketing, even the poster, messed that up for you. So there was no shock for you. But they have no focus on Gage in this film. The acting might be better than the original, but the emotion is not really there. So it's wasted. The having these good actors in this movie and not really having them cry a lot and really hammering home 
the message of death and what it can do to a family. And they overuse Zelda in this movie. The creepy thing, one of the most disturbing shit about the original is the guy playing Zelda in this one. It's just talked about over and over and over again. Like every fucking scene is like, oh, there's Zelda. We hear Zelda. She's up there. Oh, let's have another flashback. They use Zelda way too much. And the ending, it's just, I guess it's closer to the book, but I never read the book. But the ending was not as good as the first one. There's like no lesson learned from Creed. Is that his name, Creed? Kid gets killed, and then it's like rushed to the end. Like as soon as the kid's dead, they don't even like give you a lot of time spent with that kid once it's like zombie kid. It's just like, she's dead, now it's over. Judd's killed, husband's killed, wife's killed, it's over. It's just very rushed. So yeah. Very disappointing movie. I did not like it at all. Pet Cemetery. that is my number five. Number four goes to a movie that I didn't hear about until like a couple weeks before it came out and had a very promising premise until I found out what the rating was. What a disappointment. Countdown. I, lo I just love the premise of this Final Destination type app that's like no matter what you do, death's gonna come get you. And they completely ruined the movie with PG-13 rating. This movie demands an R. There is a death at the beginning that was kind of brutal, but man, if this movie just went for R, it would have been so much better. You got this main character who gets overshadowed by these two other actors in the movies that are like comedians and they're funny. And that's the only thing I really liked about the movie was just that comedy from them because it made me start to actually feel some enjoyment while watching this bland, stupid PG-13 horror movie. Everything else is just whatever. And then, seriously, like, she is being accused of raping a man. And the HR guy is like, all right, we heard his story. We don't need your story. You're fired. In today's day and age, get the fuck out of here. That would never happen. Here, like, really, just, that was so stupid. They're not going to take her story or listen to what she has to say. Like, oh, guy said she raped him. I guess she did. Bye-bye. So yeah, that was just dumb. But yeah, PJ Byrne, Tom Segura, uh, they were good. Everything else was just fucking terrible. Welcome to Moss. Number three goes to Ma, Octavia Spencer. She is the best part of this movie. She's a great actress. Everything she does, she's usually good. But she doesn't really carry the movie that much for me. She's interesting. She's definitely psychotic and she plays it good. But the other characters... You don't care about them. You just want them to die. They're your typical high school kids that want to get drunk. And they're making dumb decisions. Especially the main girl. She's making dumb decision after dumb decision. Quit going to the goddamn basement. Tell somebody about it. Call the police. She's breaking the law. You can get her arrested easily. But no, they just keep going to the basement. And this movie, the marketing was horrible. Just like Pet Cemetery. The trailer, literally, it goes from beginning to end. Like, first act, second act, third act. Here's what happens. Oh, yeah, I just saw the whole movie. Thank you. Just like the Black Christmas remake. And so, yeah, this is Ma. I saw the whole movie in the trailer, and then the movie didn't surprise me, and it has no nudity, uh, no, yeah, no nudity, no gore, nothing that a slasher should have, and they could have went for it. Like, this movie, wasn't it R? Was this movie R? I thought it was. But there's, like, scenes where they're, they're trying to go violent, and she's, like, stitching the lips of these people, and, and then... All of a sudden, like, she has this guy on the bed. She could chop his dick off or she could do whatever. But what does she do? I think she, like, makes him OD on something. It's like, really? The guy who you want revenge against the most and want to torture, the only thing you do is make him OD or bleed to death? It was one of those two. She, I think she makes him OD or she makes him bleed to death. Like, she, like, gives him a little cut and he bleeds to death. It's like, oh, that's very violent. We've never seen that before. Like... It was just disappointing. It was a dumb movie. The only thing that's remotely good about this movie was the performance by Octavia Spencer. And that's it. Now, number two goes to Annabelle Comes Home. This is the directorial debut, right? Of the writer of the other Annabelle movies and the It movies and Nun and Conjuring. Uh, what's his name? Dowerman? Gary Dowerman? I think that's his name. He is finally directing. This is his first directing job, I believe. And this is basically a haunted house uh, attraction made into a movie. Like, the group of little girls, teenage girls, go into house. One of them lives there, or two of them, and one of them's an idiot. 
and they're in the house. Creepy shit keeps happening left and right. Like, oh, creepy noises, werewolf, CGI this, CGI that. Jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. And there's a guy in my theater snoring. I was like, I get it, man. I get it. I would be sleeping too if I didn't just wake up to come see this piece of shit. And I've heard people praise this movie like it's one of the best or it's the best Annabelle. How? What? Makes no sense. I don't get it. This movie was just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. No creativity there. Just like, oh, let's pick this up. Let's pan camera. Like, they're just typical. Like, they're just so set up and formulaic. You just see it coming. And the character, like, I, I don't like the characters either. The one that causes everything to happen. This, the trailer kind of promises you the, it promises you the warrants, but you get them at, at the, the bookends, like the beginning and the end for like two minutes here and two minutes there. This movie just needed more warrants because they're interesting characters. They're better, better actors. So we need more of them. But yeah, this movie is just, this movie is just here to set up 10 other movies. You know, let's get the coin guy. Let's get the werewolf. Let's get this fucking TV and get that, the bride. That's all it was. This movie was made just to set up other movies. That's what it is. It's just a bridge to some other location with some other movie just setting up something else. See, so yeah, I just did not like this movie at all. And I also don't like that it took, most likely took money away from Child's Play because it came out like the same week and a bunch of people were seeing this instead and that irritated me too. But that didn't change my opinion on the movie. I just don't like it. It's called Annabelle Comes Home. Annabelle's still at home the whole fucking movie. She never left. What do you mean she comes home? Oh, that, I guess at the beginning, they, it's like a prequel and they take her home, but it's like, whatever. It's just Annabelle comes home. What's that even mean? But the worst movie, ironically, is directed by someone who I think directed maybe the best movie, horror movie of 2019. He also directed the worst movie of 2019, and that is Polaroid. This is the most generic of them all. The most formulaic the most bland pg-13 horror movie of this year you see a pattern here i don't like pg-13 horror movies they just don't work for me they don't scare me they don't entertain me especially these characters there's some promising things in here i kind of like the premise polaroid camera you take a picture kind of like final destination 3 whoever's in that picture will then will therefore be killed within the day so, like very soon i don't think they really establish rules like any like time like, you got seven days, the ring. But it's just, I like the premise, and that's about it. That's it. You got this chick from Haunt in here, and nobody else that I recognize. Just this chick from Haunt. And it's just, yeah, I've said enough. It's just a bad, dull, bland movie. Probably perfect for 10 to 13-year-olds who might actually get scared by this. I mean, so yeah, that's it. So yeah, number one, Polaroid, you suck. An honorable mention, though, would have been Black Christmas. Black Christmas, the remake, but I refuse to see that g fucking fire dumpster of a movie because I don't agree that with that movie's message. Men aren't evil, all right? So fuck you, Black Christmas. But those are just my least favorite horror movies of 2019. Let me know what yours are in the comments below. Keep an eye out for the top 10 best the top 10 best horror movies and the top 10 worst movies in anticipated and yeah. But anyways, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button, like and share it with all your friends and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed your scene.